Hey kids, hey lambs, or welcome back to the Hey Lamb podcast. Your host Treacle here. Catch me on Instagram at Treacle Tots um, and on Twitter as well. Had a little hiatus because life has been busy and Mariah has been quiet, but she is back. So I'm back. You know what we've got to talk about today. The Christmas season has officially kicked off and I'm going to be talking about this new song and then the forthcoming special with so many of you. But today I'm excited to be discussing this with a brand new lamp. Well, new to the show. Show, long-time listener and member of my YouTube channel, Josh Barnes. Hey, Josh, how you doing? Hi, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. I'm so happy to finally have you on the show because I've been saying to you for a while, I would want to get you on, um, and we finally made it happen, kind of last minute. Yeah, a little bit last minute, but we made it happen, so. <laughs> yeah, um, no, you were really sweet. You, you said, uh, I think you DM'd me and said, when, when are you bringing um, Hey Lamb podcast back? Because I miss it. And I'm like, oh, that's sweet. Okay, well, let's get you on then. Let's just jump on. <laughs> it, it can come back with you. There is a topic that I want to get you on for. I've been discussing that with you, but that's with someone else. And so it's a case of um, scheduling. So that hasn't happened. But um, yeah, welcome. Welcome to the show. You, you've been listening, I think. I don't know what the whole time or like quite early on pretty much yeah from the very beginning I mean way before you started doing the podcast so yeah I mean literally probably like a couple of weeks after you posted your first Mariah video and I think that was oh like talking gosh. about you know, like you meeting her and the concerts that you went to and that sort of thing so it was like yeah it must have been like a year and <laughs> I don't know how long ago, over but... a year ago oh my gosh yeah so yeah you were yeah you've been kind of like part of my little lamely uh group since yeah before the podcast absolutely because the podcast started March I think um, and then the YouTube channel was July last year. Oh my God, I can't believe it's been it's been over a year. So yeah, well over due. You were on that the first Lamb versus Lamb live that we did, which was fun. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Long apologies again to you and everyone else who it was yeah kind of <laughs> stuck in that quiz that went on and on and on. But um, no, super glad to have you on. So um, new to the audience, so please just tell everyone a little bit about yourself. I mean, I I know where you are and everything. You're on my side of yeah. the pond. You're in my playground. But yeah, tell everyone listening a little bit about you. Yeah, sure. Um, so I am in Lincolnshire, uh, which is kind of the smack bang in the middle of uh, England, um, sort of close to the coast. Um, and, and yeah, I have been a Mariah fan since about, I've tried to work this out, like middle of kind of like, like a, I would say a lamb between from like the middle of 2017. Because uh, this kind of like goes into, uh, well, I think I've said it before. I want to get you on yeah. with Taz because we, we wear our Legacy Lamb badges uh, for, for, you know, laughs and giggles and whatever quite proudly. But we said, we you know, we've gone from, you know, cassettes to CDs to digital and uh, it must be, it must have been a different experience for Lambs who are just a little bit younger and join like later and like that experience. And yeah, uh, reminds me how, how, how old you are, Josh? I am 22. <laughs> I feel so old, <laughs> but, uh, but no, that, that, that's awesome. I love, I love the fact that uh, Mariah has been picking up lambs from, you know, 2015 onwards. So you said 2017. So briefly, like talk to me about like, what, what was that? What was happening? What <clears throat> happened in 2017 that, you know, grabbed you? Well, I, I was trying to work out like the first time that I actually acknowledged like Mariah. And I, I've, I've always been, uh, I'm quite musical anyway. Like I play a couple of instruments. Um, and so I've always been interested in specific artists. And I always go into one, spe I, I pick an artist, it seems, just subconsciously, and then kind of analyze everything about them. So I've done it with uh, Michael Jackson and Celine and Cher and, you know, a few other people. But um, it just, Mariah kind of clicked. So I started, I think the, the original, the first time that I actually started to hear anything of like her catalog or anything like that was actually on YouTube. And it was, um, it was the, like, you know, like the vocal highlight videos that are about seven or eight minutes from each concert uh -huh. that, that I can't remember what the channel is, but um, they kind of, they kind of do like the best bits from, from like the most recent concert. Yeah. And I can remember watching those and I was kind of hooked on those. And then I started to delve into the catalog. Um, yeah, like kind of cherry picking songs that I'd heard in those videos, which mostly were like, you know, the big hits, like the number ones. Um, and then like the, free, the frequent stuff that she performs, obviously like the most like, you know, hero and we belong together and that kind of thing. And then I started to, to work through album by album. 
and kind of going through going oh i know that one that that was a you know number one or whatever or that was a hit i heard that one on such and such video uh, and then working kind of through the b-sides and and yeah oh my and gosh. the more obscure kind of land papers but that's awesome that kind of confirms like what um taz and i were like hypothesizing you know i guess Oh, I guess like Lamb today starting out, it's YouTube. And like, can you imagine, you know, because YouTube wasn't a thing <laughs> for us. So um, can you imagine like discovering Mariah as an artist and jumping on YouTube and just having your mind blown, especially like 2017 when she's got all those years under her yeah. belt. There's like I... so much <clears throat> to take in. Like, where do you start? It must be overwhelming. It is, yeah. I mean, I've got to say that the first, I, I've tried to work out like the first time that I started watching videos, and I think it was like 2016 Sweet Sweet Fantasy time. Because um, I was like, oh, she was performing in Leeds, or oh, she was performing at the O2 or whatever. Um, and I was like, oh, that's that's interesting, because, you know, it was kind of tempting. Um, but I was I was kind of too late. So, uh, yeah, it, it was kind of, that was kind of the first time that I really started to kind of delve into videos. But I would say that 2017, I, I one of the big things, kind of that year, 2017 was such a mess <laughs> for me personally uh, and I kind of latched onto Mariah and she was kind of like the saving grace of that year. Oh, I love the fact that at um, such a young age you know you're doing like all your um, deep dive in and you know all the greats you're doing your, your musical homework it's not just Mariah you're you know researching all the greats and you're like oh Mariah let's just pause here and let's go in a little bit deeper I love that. <laughs> yeah and she hasn't got away since so. <laughs> um, I, I want to explore this in so much more detail on a future episode. I want to get Taz on because um, I want to hear all about it, but it's going to make me feel like really, really old and I'm not going to suffer alone. I'm going to drag Taz into this. And I've been trying to get you and Taz together, but it's just a scheduling thing. So um, yeah, if you have a, a positive experience here today on the show, then I'd love to have you back and then we'll join you up with Taz because I'm really such just so um, interested in how it is like, you know, YouTube and just overwhelm it and then you like you go through the discography and what order did you do it and like compare like you experience a song for the first time like live on YouTube and then you go back and listen to the recorded version like what's the comparison what's the you know because it's just it's just it's almost like a completely backwards way for like Taz and I it's like we've got the studio albums and then over time because there's things coming up on YouTube now like rare music box tour footage I'm like well that's a version of a song that I have not lived with for like 25 years you know so it's it's completely it's completely different so yeah I really do want to um explore that in another episode but today we have got to talk about the fact that Christmas has officially started I'm not ready I've got no decorations up I didn't know when I was going to start are you are you, are you festive yet <laughs> <laughs> I I wasn't no I was kind of dreading it to be honest yeah I, I was I was really looking forward to a new studio album non-Christmas um, and I've kind of been longing for that all year I'm not gonna lie um, and kind of the start of October my mindset kind of switched um, slightly in that I was sort of looking forward to Christmas and then like a week before Halloween I was getting really excited because I was like She's going to post another one of those videos on the 31st of October at midnight. And that's just going to kick everything off. And I know that she's been working so hard. We, we all do that. She's been working so hard this year on, on new Christmas stuff, whether that's the special or, you know, the new single um, uh, and other things as well, other projects that she's got lined up. So. Yeah, yeah I, am, I, I am now starting to look really look forward to Christmas. So. <laughs> yeah, and now now I'm thinking, oh, okay, it's time for Christmas content on my YouTube channel, and um, I'm gonna be sat in my corner, and I've just got my regular vinyl out. There's there's nothing Christmas. I think I might even hold off. Last year I embraced it so early because we were so excited. Like it's the first Apple special. Oh my god! And last year was such a crap year. Um, I just, I just went for, I, I think, oh, also Nath came down to visit me in September and we put my tree up to do a Christmas quiz and I was like, I cannot leave it up in September. So I packed it away, but because I'd had it up and like, you know, had like a little taste. So I think, I, I can't remember when, I know it went up in, in uh, November. And here we are now, um, first week of November. And I don't know, I think I'm going to try and wait. I don't know. The special comes out. The new Apple special, uh, we haven't got a date yet, have we? But it's, it's December, right? It's early December. Yeah. Um, and what was last year? Was it December 4th, I want to say? Yeah, like I, did, I looked this up the other day um, when, because I, I know that when Mariah said that there was a new special coming, she didn't specify a date. And then I think there was like an Apple article that was released that said December. And then I looked, I thought, well, it's going to be early December. So hmm. yeah, I, I was like, well, I need to know a date. So uh, 
I was trying to work out when it was last year, but yeah, I think it was the fourth or the fifth. So, so I'm I'm thinking I might yeah I'm gonna start you know in, in interacting and embracing you know the the, the uh, Christmas content she's producing, but I might not go ham and have all my decorations and the tree up until the special is is coming out. So I want to have it like in waves. Last year I think I went hard and I went early. My my I tree was up for like um, ten weeks or something. It was it was maybe yeah. a little bit too long. <laughs> I did the same as well. Yeah, it it was. I think it was the first week of November, and I still live at home, so I don't have that much say. So I kind of timed it like perfectly. Nobody was in. It was just me, and I was like, right, I'm going up into the loft, and everything's coming down, and I'm going to do as much as of it as I possibly can before anybody comes home, and uh, and then and then I'll get away with it, and then it can stay up for yeah, like two or three months. So, um, yeah, it was. It I was really early. Last How did year. that but, go down? Was that well received it, by the family? Not really, no. But um, I think I think they 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 do like Christmas, but they don't like it to the extent that I like it. Um, and I comply, I like do the whole hog. So it's yeah, it's like everything is decorated. So like the tree and you know like everything. Um, so yeah, like I think Christmas, I think it's the effort. But because because we are lambs and we have the queen of Christmas, I think we just love it. There's that little bit harder than people around us. So um, yeah. <laughs> Um, so let, let's get, let's get to it, Josh. Where, where are you with Fall in Love at Christmas? What were you, what were you hoping for? What were you expecting? Then we had the teaser and now we've got the whole song. So kind of like walk me through it. What were you hoping for? I don't know, to be honest. I, I didn't have particularly high expectations. Um, I'm not going to lie. Um, I, I, I was kind of, after Mariah mentioned gospel, I did, did kind of get a little bit excited about that because I think she said that on one of the spaces. Yeah. Um, and and that, was, that was quite interesting. But I, in terms of the teaser, I quite liked it. But I do think now that it's been released and I've listened to it over the last like 48 hours or whatever it's been, it, it, it's growing on me. But I, I do think it needs that visual. I do think it needs the music video because otherwise I don't think it feels particularly Christmassy. Although oh Christmas is mentioned in the lyrics, but... <laughs> but it, there's, like, there's like the wintry like wind at the beginning, and we've got um, very, very gentle sleigh bells, and, and like you say, the, Chris, you know, the word Christmas is in there. Um, I like the fact it's not really in-your-face Christmassy, because it's yeah. got like the R&B. It's really smooth. And I is, actually, yeah. I like the melody. It's not just like, oh, it's a Christmas song, it's a Christmas song. Like, it's really, you know, I like the fact that it's a bit more of a subtle christmas song and i also maybe didn't even really need the word christmas like so much in the lyrics i think not everything has to be a full 100 percent. oh my god it's such a christmas song i think it was a bit hard down it could have been like even even more maybe but um i'm okay so but there were rumors weren't there i don't you're you're on instagram and twitter right so you, yeah, yeah. you, you yeah. see things you hear things have been said so we had um i think i forget which account i get tags and i get sent things and i just retweet and like whatever um but i remember there was the uh rumored title fall in love at christmas and actually just take it back a little bit like you said about non-studio uh, non-christmas um, I really do need another studio album. I need a, a Caution 2.0. I think it is coming. She said in Twitter Spaces she's working on um, holiday music and non-holiday music. And especially on the non-holiday side, it sounds like she's so excited about capturing the process. And she's there with, you know, people she's producing with and the sound engineer and like laying it all down. I think we're going to get something quite visual from her. But I never, I never thought it was going to be this year. The only non-holiday thing I thought we might have got would be Chick. Because at the start of the year, she was so like, I've got it. Yeah, I've got my version and I'm doing something with someone. And she seemed really, really keen. I don't know. I was like, well, that's like a pet project. That could be cute. Maybe we'll get that um, over the summer. I thought maybe we'd get more for Glitter. I thought we might get some, I don't know, unreleased bits and pieces. That didn't happen. I had so many hopes for Glitter 20. But Glitter 21, maybe, because the 21st anniversary, that's still a cute number. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, I, di I didn't think we were going to get um, a non-holiday album this year. So I thought, okay, we're just going to get Christmas. And then she went really quiet. And that's kind of why I've been a bit quiet, because I've been busier with work. And I thought, um, I, I t I'd, I'd, I'll just take a couple of weeks off off of the podcast and just just be, just to breathe because I know it's going to get crazy as soon as she comes back it's going to be full 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 go 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 um so we had the rumored title fall in love 
at Christmas. And then we had we had rumors, didn't we? Um, Kirk Franklin's name came up, the Clark sisters, and one of them seems to have confirmed it. There was I, I, I I'm really bad with the who's who of the Clark sisters. But did you see that clip of someone? There was like a little clip and they at an award show or something. Just said, oh, my sisters were doing something with with Miss Mariah Carey. Did you catch that clip? I did. Yeah, yeah. I can remember messaging you as well about because I know that you you listened to is it uh, Karen. Yes, Karen Clark. I love yeah. Karen. Yeah, I love Karen Clark. Yeah, yeah, I love her albums. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I do think the Clark sisters are absolutely fantastic. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, but I'm not. I was trying to work out like what they were going to do. Um, I don't know. What, I, I my thinking was that they were going to do like Oh Come Were You Faithful or something like that, like stripped down oh gosh, with Mariah oh or something. Gosh. I would absolutely love that. I'd die if, if that. There's so much. There's there's so much. Okay, we're gonna get. I want to get to that. I want to get to the special. Let's let's start with. Fall in love at Christmas. So, okay, when when she, uh, so, okay, we had the whole Halloween. Okay, what did you think? It's just so much. My mind's going like a hundred different directions at one time. What did you think of this year's Halloween video? Because it was different this year. Um, it's only like a new kind of like tradition, but everyone's like waiting for Mariah. And she didn't have such a big build up with the whole like, not yet, not yet. It was like no. one little not yet. Yeah, and yeah. then I thought, oh, are we going to get something? I was like, no, we have to. We have to get something because she's making, she's having like a moment with that. And I thought this one was really, really uh, different and cute and well done. What did you make of the of the It's Time video? I did. I really liked it this year. I've got to say, yeah, well, as you say, it was slightly different to the last year where she like switches from the ha- Halloween costume into like the, the kind of more like festive costume. And I did really like that. And I liked the humour of it as well. You know, where, she, where she's got the bat and she's grunting and she's like smacking the, uh, <laughs> smacking the pumpkin. I did really think that was quite funny. And uh, I thought it was really well done. I thought it was on like the same humour. I don't know whether you can remember, but I think it was, I think it was 2020, so last year. Oh, no, no. Is that right? Yeah, like last year. Um, she did that video for Spotify where she's in like the command centre and she's like, you know, it's it's time and she's like pressing all the buttons and everything and, do yeah. you remember that one? Yeah, yeah I yeah. thought it was kind of on the same kind of humour kind of level as that, where she's yeah. like, you know, she's smacking, you know, the pumpkins to, to bits and kind of <laughs> revealing it's time as opposed to it's not time. Yeah, I thought that was really clever. I, I preferred this one. I think this one was more... Um... It was, the way it was shot, I, I think the, 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 the one with the whole control center was just like really, really like cheesy and camp, yeah. which is fine and fun. But this one, I, there was this couple of shots, a bit more cinematic, like just like the close up of her, her heel. And then, you know, the baseball bat over the shoulder. And then she's like sneaking at the door, like peering around. I was like, that, that, that's got, it's got a bit of production behind it and a few different angles and things. Um, and she just looks so damn good. Um, you know, with the, when she, she switches to Christmas and she's throwing the glitter and sparkles and everything. So I, I think that might be my favorite, like it's time uh, moment yeah. so far. Um, I really hope she sticks with this little tradition now each year and we get. Like, yeah, a I do little, as well. Yeah. <laughs> a <new little laughs> thing. Um, so then, yeah, then someone commented like, "Oh my gosh, like what's going on?" Because we all saw it that like, split second where it said, you know, 5th, uh, 5th of November. And I was, and, I, and again, there'd been a tweet where someone had said, Fall in Love at Christmas is going to be released on November 5th. So as soon as we saw that, I was like, yeah, whoever's been tweeting this information mm-hmm. ha- have got their, their facts together. Um, so yeah, we didn't we didn't have uh, long to wait at, at all. And then I was surprised we got a, a teaser. I thought, well, we've only got to wait like, what, four days or something, four or five days. Um, and we're, we're, we're getting an actual decent 30 second clip what was your initial reaction to that snippet i did really like it yeah i because i mean that chunk is taken from like the climax of the the kind of like radio edit isn't it kind of you know yeah like the the actual main body of the song as opposed to like the gospel kind of like extra bit um and i did really i mean the vocals are absolutely insane on the entire track um and the layering and the background vocals and the harmonies and everything are just insane i really like uh, mariah and Khaled. i think they sound absolutely fantastic together um, yeah, yeah. I, I I really did love that snippet. I thought I thought it really kind of it was like the chorus, wasn't it, where she kind of kicks back in uh, for the climax there. And yeah, I, I really did think it was it was really really good. It um it grabbed me. I really did enjoy it. But it, it's like I'm like oh, I, I like a snippet, but then I'm like, but I I, I can't. I want to like judge, you know, and like oh and make decisions. And I'm like, but I can't. And then also I want to wait until I can hear it like full quality. I want to have headphones in. I want to have it on a decent speaker. So when it's like just you know that little clip on social media, I'm like, well, I've consumed it because you put it in front of my face. Um, and I'm excited, but I'm like, oh, but now I just, I just need to hear. I'm almost like, I'd rather go five days 
and not hear anything and then have it completely fresh yeah especially when it's like a climax bit because then you find yourself like you've listened to that over and over and over and then you get the full song and you find yourself the first listen just waiting for like oh when where is that bit? yeah where's that, is that bit? bit yeah <laughs> i i do think I, I can see why she did release the climax but i do think it was a bit of a shame because as you say you're sort of sat through the song waiting and then when it does build you've already heard it so it it kind of ruins the surprise kind of thing. It kind of, yeah. it's, it's more of an anti-climax than a climax. But yeah, <laughs> yeah was, a little bit. It, I really do like how gentle, how gently the song um, begins. And then knowing that, that clip, and I thought, oh, we're, we're not like on that level to start with at all. We're really, really like, I mean, Mariah does all the time. She builds and builds and builds. Um, but I mean, and then, and then with the gospel outro, like she just like, she's like, oh, I'm building. Let's just jump up like three levels now and take it somewhere else. But I love how like peaceful and chill it is. One thing you said was interesting. You feel like it really needs the, the, the visual, the video. So what do you think yeah. of the video and what, why do you feel like it, it's it's so important we have that? I don't know. I just feel like I actually played this song to a friend earlier and he he, he liked the song, um, but he said that it was too long. I played him like the full versions and it's like five minutes and 30 or 40 seconds or whatever it is. And I do feel like it does drag a little bit. So without the visuals there, I just think that if somebody was to click on it and watch the whole thing, like not necessarily a lamb, but you know, like an uh, like a casual listener, um, I do think that they would perhaps like lose interest or or be put off by the song because of its length. If they weren't to like find the radio edit, which is obviously like the cut down version, but um, I just I just think there's something missing in the entire. I think because of the length, maybe um, it just it just needs those visuals as well, especially to feel more Christmassy than the kind of R and B track kind of feels. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, I, I get that. I think that, I don't know what the percentages would be for me, but there's like, oh, it's like, like I said, it's not like in your face Christmassy. It's like, oh, it's a certain percentage Christmassy, but then you watch the video and then that percentage just shoots up like all the yeah. way. So I think actually, I never thought about that until you said it a few minutes ago. But yeah, I think maybe it really does benefit because I'm also looking at the video thinking, well, and they said it'd be her first and only performance of the song. And I was like, oh, so is it? But it's not a performance, like it's, it's a video, like it's just suddenly she's inside in one outfit and then she's outside in another outfit. I don't call that a performance, I call it a video. But it, I'm, tr I'm looking at it thinking, is this from the special or is this, they like they've done the special, but they've also just done this separately. I think maybe we were chatting, I've been chatting to everyone on my Instagram yeah. DMs, but what, <clears throat> I, I haven't made my mind up, what do you think? Is this from the special? I'm not sure. I think it could be. I don't know whether you can remember. Well, I'm sure you do. The Walker's advert. The mm -hmm. Walker's advert was filmed. I'm pretty sure. You might be. I might be wrong. It was pretty. I'm pretty sure that it was filmed on the set at, of the new "All I Want for Christmas Is You" video. I believe so, which yeah. I didn't click. I didn't even click at the time because we're just like, oh my God, shiny new things, all these, you know, videos and products and everything. And then someone, and then someone had to point it out uh, to me or bring it to my attention. Like, actually, yeah. Yeah, and that, that makes sense. Like, the whole premise is she's on the set of a music video. Well, let's do it when she's actually on the set of a music video. Oh, the music video, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I do wonder whether or not... I mean, I, I don't know whether I messaged you last night. I can't struggle to remember now. But I'm pretty sure that the directing credits for, the, for this video for Fall in Love at Christmas is Mariah and Brian. I believe so. I haven't seen it and with I, my own eyes, but everyone's telling me that's what yeah. it is. And I'm like, cool, cool, cool. What, what I was thinking was that... And I, I highly doubt that those two are directing the special. So if this is just lifted from the special, I highly doubt it. That, to me, that suggests that it isn't just directly lifted from the special. Yeah. It's potentially like it's either a separately shot video or they have basically like rehashed footage that was that is from the from the, or like added extra bits into the footage from the from the special to make like a music video. Good, um, good detective work there, Josh. I think that, yeah, we've got, um, is it Joseph Kahn credited as being one of the directors for the special? Um, I, I, I think that it's, because Dilibby got that whole, like, it's at home vibe, because I love the fact she's got all her receipts hanging on the wall. Like, for all the kids are like, oh, she's Christmas only. It's like, well, there's the Christmas, you know, like, plaque and award, but there's all the other ones as well. Well, not all of them, just, you know, select few. Um, 
but it's got that like just hanging out at home vibe and there she is with like her little home recording booth i love the fact it, it's is it her la home? i'm really bad with her home so like it's it's not new york is that her la place i'm not sure because she was renting somewhere wasn't she she was renting somewhere in la last year during like after because she she kind of stayed in new york until like september october time and then i'm pretty sure she went to la and rented somewhere yeah. And then she went to Aspen and then went back to where she was renting in L.A. Yeah. So I don't know whether this is the same place that she was renting in L.A. And I take it like, as that. It kind of just looks it like could it. Be, just yeah. put a little booth in there, in the, in the yeah. corner. <laughs> I'm here I, enough. I just, I'm here enough. Let's just put a vocal booth in the corner. That was the other thing. I, I, as soon as I saw the video, I saw like the snippet where you see, as you say, she's got all of the receipts and all. I was like, she must have sent someone back to New York, like box them up, put them in a crate and then pop them in a van, like set them off on like a... I don't know how far it is, but it's on the other side of the country, isn't it? So they must have driven driven them across the other side of the country to, to stick them in this video. But I reckon she's got so many of those award plaques in um, storage because she can't store them all. But I remember I was looking at it thinking, is this this is this the same space from the We Belong Together Valentine's um, mix? You know, where she just moved the furniture out of the way and done you know, this little thing. And then was it um, her anniversary where JD was live streaming? I and think that was actually at JD's house. I think, I think yeah, when we, we were you know trying when, to work out where that was. Yeah, I think that was JD's LA home. I think. Okay. Um, okay. I, I'm pretty sure that that I'm, I'm sure that I read somewhere or, or I saw saw something where he was like making breakfast and he was they were talking about him making breakfast. I think for them in his house or something like that. So. Uh, okay. So yeah, I, I, I'm 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 really not good with like where it is and the properties and and stuff. But I just love the fact that if it is her home or it's somewhere that she's renting at length it's just got that whole vibe at home and the vocal booth and her awards and I think I think you're right I think I don't think it is part of the special I think they've taken a moment where she's already in full glam um, and she's just thrown on the uh, hello the jersey dress from charm bracelet era I'm old enough to remember that like when it happened when she wore um, the blue one and the red one and then um, she did see the UK over here, and I remember she she they they like bronzed her. She was like Mariah, like doesn't often like look like overly fake tanned, but she was quite quite orange, <laughs> um, and like really, like a lot of blush. And she was doing mm. boy, I need you on see the UK. I think I, I, yeah, you've seen I've that? seen that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was hung over to hell and in the audience for that. And my friends had to prop me up. I was like, oh, I'm not going to go to this one. They're like, you're, you're coming. We're all going. Um, so that's like, uh, yeah, like prop me up and carry me in. But um, yeah, she had like a light blue little jersey dress again. She was into the jersey dresses back then. And I was like, and when we got the photo of them at the piano, first of all, I'm like, uh, award plaques. And then I'm like, uh, hello, the butterfly lounge. That sign I want to talk about. Um, but then I was like, oh, what is she wearing underneath that oversized cardigan? Which, by the way, shout out to Alex and his amazing Instagram account, Mariah yes. Carey Closet. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. I, know, is, I, I want to get it absolutely right because he changed the name at one point. Is it Mariah Carey Closet or MC Closet? I just go to it as Closet. It's Mariah Carey Closet underscore. Um, he is so damn quick. So he's found, yeah, the uh, authentic. Uh, Michael Jordan, Chicago 23 jersey shirt, $300. Um, and that's what that's what she was having. A, she had a dress made <laughs> out of back in the day. And then he's gone to uh, post. Uh, have, you, have you seen the full thing? Like the Dolce and yeah, Gabbana yeah. cardigan. Yeah. And he's got the heels. Louis, he's even yeah. the socks. He's even got the socks. <laughs> and I'm, I'm pretty sure that I read that they're diamond encrusted, aren't they? I'm pretty sure that the little logo is... Um, crystal embellished socks at a modest $90. So the likes of you and I could um, indulge if we so wished. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, did we did we even see her socks? In the video? But um, I, yeah, um, yeah, he's, he's got great connections and he, he, he knows people in, in, in the in the fashion industry. And yeah, so I, I, oh, I, I freaking love that account so much. And I need to get him. I we've, spoken, we've spoken about uh, but before here and I want to get him on at some time and, 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 and delve in. Right, um, we're going to take a really quick break because we're like half an hour in straight away. So we're going to take a very quick break and then more from Josh when we come back. 
Thanks for listening to Hey Lamb, guys. I hope you are enjoying it. If you are, you can leave me a little tip. You can buy me a drink over on buymeacoffee.com. It is a great way to show your support to your favorite creators by buying them a drink. Simply head over to buymeacoffee.com slash heylam and you can tip me with a little drink. Cheers. And we are back. So the um, I was surprised that we had the, the, the neon sign saying um, the butterfly lounge because I thought she was going with um, Lamley Lounge or Lamb's Lounge or whatever. Like, what does she call the Twitter spaces? I, I'm so bad. Was it Lamley um, Lounge? I think she does call it the Lamley Lounge, yeah. 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 And then I think someone was even getting into, like, her trademarks and things. Someone found something. You can find anything online now. I like, I I'm, I can't. I'm so happy just to receive the information people share. But I think someone was saying she was trying to trademark something like the Lamley Lounge. I was like, oh, she's really going for something right. with Lamley Lounge. But then we had the Butterfly Lounge. So, well, I don't know. I don't know. What, what do you make of, what did you think of the sign? I thought it was really, really cool for her to include that. And I think that potentially she had that made specifically for the special. Oh, yeah. Um, but I, 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 I don't know whether that's actually going to go anywhere. Um, I just wonder whether or not that is just like a cool thing for the lambs to spot in the back of the video kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it wasn't even like, a, oh, there's an Easter egg. It's like, boom, it's like right there yeah. for us to enjoy. I think it's just there for us to enjoy. I think it's just, um, like say, something for the special or maybe it's... Uh, part. I don't know, like she's, if if she really is, if she has been tweaking, you know, let's say she's renting again in LA or something, maybe, and she's put that vocal booth in, like genuinely, maybe that is just part of this place that she's living in or renting, where she's like, this is where I'm tweaking the last minute vocals, this is where I'm doing things, and let's make it feel like a music space. Maybe she's just called that part of her house, the Butterfly Lounge. That's her little I do... home office. <laughs> I do wonder whether or not this house in LA is like the new, like as opposed to like the New York apartment, it's going to be like the house with the pool for the kids. And I wonder whether or not she's going to stay there. Um, I mean, looking at that video, it, as you say, like with the booth, whether or not that's just like a mock-up or it is actually like a proper vocal booth, um, I don't know. But it, I, I'm she's been there now for, if it is the same house that, that was she was in last year, she's been there for a good while now. So I do wonder yeah, whether or not. She's, she's, moving in. she's actually going to, yeah, I do wonder whether or not she's thinking, well, this this is going to be like my permanent number two as opposed to like the New York apartment. Yeah, she, I, I look at that and I'm thinking, oh, she's gone gone back there. She's moving in. She's redecorating. She's bringing her awards and, vo- you know, permanent vocal booth put in and everything. Good for her. Good for her. I think, yeah, you want you want the New York home and you want the, you want the LA home. Um, overall... I'm... I do enjoy the video. I think um, she looks absolutely beautiful. I was so happy she picked the photo she did to like make her new profile picture. I was like, yes, because that is so, it, it's not like so like obvious, all the Christmas stuff. It's like Mariah in the red dress. It's like sequence, sequence. I love her. One of my favorite scenes in the um, first special, uh, Apple special last year was um, the gold look. The goal when Christmas is, comes. Oh my god, at the yeah. piano, and I love that. I'm like, this is even better because it's like <laughs> Mariah from that scene in the special meets caution era Mariah. Yeah, because she's yeah. she's got that caution hair going on, and yeah. I love the way she looks outside, and she's all golden, con- uh, con- uh, contrasting against the snow and everything. That's probably my, I mean, say favorite like scene in the video. It's not. It's only like a couple of little bits and pieces. Um, but the, the the neon sign, the butterfly lounge, because I'm like, oh, I'm like low key jealous of that. I could I'm quite happily have one of those up on my wall. Um, and then that golden look when she's just outside by herself. It's great, very busy, and there's lots of people and the kids and everything and blah blah blah. But just her outside by herself, I thought was a really strong but sexy image. Do you have like a favorite moment or what what pleases you about the video? Exactly what you've just said. Yeah, that ensemble, <laughs> the entire every single shot where she's outside in the snow next to that pillar. Um, I, I think she just looks, yeah, absolutely amazing. Um, but I do think, I think, I think she looks the best she's looked in like three or four years, actually, oh, in God, this yeah. video. Um, since, I mean, I'm trying to think now, probably since like, um, probably like I, I Heart Radio. Do you remember when she did that set for I Heart Radio? Yes, to um, launch uh, Caution. Yeah, like a 30 yeah, minute people, set in yeah, Vegas. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think she looked, that was like the, the peak, I think, of like the Caution era. Um, around, mm. I think that was like August, September time. Um, it was, uh, all we had was GTFO. 
Yeah, and that was her first live performance of GTFO, I think, wasn't it? So. Yeah, she was like, just, cause yeah. it's, very, it's very subdued and very mellow, and she did it, and she's like, just for laughs, just for laughs, to the audience. But she gave a really good performance that 30-minute set, and I've watched that back on YouTube a few times. Yeah, like, I, I did I did really it's, like, <laughs> it's like peak, peak caution. Yeah. Caution era, oh, she just looked so, so good. And when we got that, just that, that photo, that still from this video, um, fall in love at Christmas I was like oh my god she looks so good but it's it's just a photo it's just like one image and then the video I'm like oh my mm -hmm. god she looks even better than last year so I'm I'm really really excited uh, for the special um before we, we talk about what maybe we might get with the special um I just want to confess um I'm actually playing the radio edit of this song more than the full version i feel like a bad lamb but i'm just going to be honest i really really do love the gospel moment i want mariah to do more gospel and i think we'll get to it. i think we're going to have that in in the special but and it does give me heavenly from me i am and everyone's saying that yep 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 um agree but i just find that the the song is such um like a mood it's so smooth and i love the fact it builds but it doesn't go like crazy. And then I think it was really smart to do the radio mix because the radio edit, because that, that's the one that's gone on my playlists. That's on my, yeah. my evening playlist, my Mariah Ballads playlist, my chill out playlist. But when it goes like off, and I love that when they, they have the gospel moment, it, it's just suddenly it's a different, it's a different moment. It's not even the same song. It's a completely like, it's like a, a add on, which is what she was doing with the second Christmas album. Yeah. She was doing things yeah. like that, but mm -hmm. how do you feel about the gospel moment and which, which version is your, your most played so far? My most played is probably the full version. Um, but to be honest, I haven't listened to it that much. Um, I, I do like the gospel moment. Um, but I, as you kind of said, it, it is kind of like a separate song in a way. Yeah. And it's just a shame that the, I think, I think that the, 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 the R and B kind of section, like the, the, the actual, like, proper version of the song I, it's, I think that perhaps one of the choruses could actually be cut out of that to make it slightly shorter and it's a sh I think it's a shame that the gospel section wasn't just a little bit longer um to kind of make its own to make it feel like it is like an extension of the song as opposed to like this little kind of like outro because that's how not kind of how I view it it's like a minute or whatever it is like outro it kind of kicks in really really abruptly yeah and then it kind of like blasts for like 60 seconds and then it's all over um, yeah, it's just it, a shame that that doesn't kind of go on for just a little bit longer and like the R&B section isn't just a little bit shorter but I would keep the R&B section as it is I, I really do love the radio edit and I like it as a three minute whatever song um, but yeah the, the the gospel moment you just have you, I, if I've got the like the if I've got the EP on shuffle I don't know which version it is it's it also a bit like oh it's that version it's happening it's happening it kind of like catches you by surprise a little bit but I actually wonder if it's um, like a spill over kind of um, feeling like she's like feeling gospelly because I think we're going to have a gospel moment a full gospel moment in the special because I have got my heart set on the Clark sisters we mentioned them earlier I, I, they've been reported one of them has pretty much confirmed it so in my mind there is going to be a gospel moment with the Clark sisters you mentioned what did, you, uh, what did you say? Uh, oh, come on, you faithful? Is that what you said? I did, yeah. Just just before we move on, Matt, I was going to say, did you uh -huh. notice in the video that uh, Mariah and Khaled are drinking a certain drink? Yes. Did you notice what it was? Because on the top of the piano, there's a bottle of Black Irish. Yes. Yeah. yeah. People did were, you spot people, that? Um, and not on the first watch. Not on the first because I, I watched. I, I saw she was drinking. Um, but I'm like, what? I, taking like everything in, and then when I was looking, and I had a watch of the video, and I was paying attention to what's in the background. I was trying to see like what the awards actually were and things, and then I spotted the bottles, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, you haven't got to like work, like try and guess, like, oh, she's probably drinking black guy. No, she is. There's the bottles neatly on display <laughs> in the corner. I really, I really th was hoping. I, I'm giving up hope now. I don't know why, but um. I was really hoping we'd get it over here in the UK for Christmas, but there's that whole licensing thing, like she's not allowed to, it seems, because there's already a Black Irish. I'm like, just quickly change the name, call it like Mimi's Black Irish or Mariah's Black Irish or something. Just quickly change it, print some new labels, get it packaged. I, I want to splash, come on. 
I, I, I do wonder whether or not she's even going to be able to release it over here. I don't, I don't know how the, the rights work. I know that in the UK, I don't think she can, or in Ireland. Um, but I don't know how it works in Europe. I don't know whether they've got like the, the, the rights to it in, in the whole of Europe or how it works. But yeah, I, I, I can't it see it coming European over here. Thing, yeah, it might be, yeah. yeah. I, I think it might be a European thing. So I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it, it's pretty much going to be its own version of Bailey's. And and I'm not a Bailey's drinker. That's not my that's not my splash. Um, but it's Mariah, so of course I would I would indulge, and maybe it would win me over. Um, but I'm not going to be buying any Bailey's this Christmas. But I would buy plenty of Black Irish because that would be cute to have um, offering guests when they come over. It might make some festive gifts for friends and things. So. Yeah, she'd get a few coins if she could sell it over here. We'll see, we'll see. But yeah, having Black Irish in the video was a bit of a tease. Like, oh yeah, there's that drink of yours that we can't have. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, no, I do wonder whether or not there's going to be like a, a new commercial or, or a new uh, advert for Black Irish from the special or something. I don't know, like that seemed to be like product placement to me, where she had it kind of yeah. sat on the piano. So I wonder whether or not we're going to get any shots of like her and Khaled like drinking like, yeah. whatever flavour it was or yeah. yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure, yeah, like you've got, again, you've got her on set, full glam, just do a quick little something or it's going to be, yeah, product placement or whatever, whatever. Um, right, so we are getting this new special. So um, Mariah's Christmas, the magic continues. What do you think we're going to get? We Okay, let's start with the Clark sisters. Yes, so, yeah, sorry, I um, almost had to No, 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 it's cool. We, we're all about tangents here. So um, Clark sisters, you think possibly them featuring on a song she's already covered this is where i'm thinking so i'm with you so talk me through your thoughts maybe yeah i mean i was thinking i was thinking either and I, I would like an acapella moment because Ooh. i think that that would i mean that is literally like the clark sisters written all over them is is you know like an acapella, acapella moment um where they completely like break it down and the different parts all add up and i know that mariah is completely all about backgrounds and harmonies and that sort of thing so i wonder whether or not that was going to be a thing. And then I was trying to work out which songs would actually fit from, from that. So I was thinking either Oh Come All Ye Faithful or um, God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen. Oh my God. Because And I would a lot die of people, if you did either of those. Mm -hmm. I, I, would, I would die for either. I, I mean, God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen. A lot of lambs feel so strongly about it. I would love for her to do it in the special because it was. it's always like the overlooked, you know, song. Uh, it doesn't get spoken about enough and oh my god i think it needs to be with the clark sisters it needs to be a vocal moment and like you say she's all yeah. about the the layering and the arrangements and the harmonies and stuff um so i hadn't actually given any specific thought as to what song it would be but i do think within the special she's going to go back into her catalog of christmas songs and, and do what she did the last one. We had that little, uh, we had the, the soundtrack. I hope we get that again. So um, for me, it's still a little too early, but I'm now starting to listen to some of the songs again. So I'm like, oh yeah, like, you know, I love the the um, the magical Christmas version of Joy to the World and Silent Night. I'm so glad that she gave us new vocals, you know. So okay, I did Silent Night, I did that in 94. It's like, yeah, but it's 2020. You know, how do you want to present it and sing it now? And uh, I love the fact she's done that. And I think she's going to do that with a few songs. And God rest you, Mary Gentleman, would be amazing. Um, I think we've already said to each other, uh, uh, miss you most at Christmas time. It, it's yeah, time I've, for that song I've, to have some shine, please. <laughs> I have come up with a theory uh, for miss you most. Now with this new Fall in Love at Christmas time, I do think that there is going to be some sort of story element because that's like the lead single and it's the new song as well. I wonder whether or not Khaled might play, I'm speculating, but I wonder whether or not somebody's going to be trying to find somebody at Christmas, um, like a partner. Um, so I wonder whether or not Miss You Most could be used before Fall In Love Again at Christmas mm. um, as kind of like an acapella moment maybe. And then they'd segue into that song um, and then you know, they segue into like, all I want for Christmas is you. Cause that would be like, you know, the end of the happy ending. That's the love story. That's the love yeah. story. I'm, I'm missing you. And then this new song is about reconnecting and we're going to fall in love again. And yeah, I could, you're, you're, yeah, you're one step ahead of me. You're thinking like, what is the premise going to be? What's the narrative? Last year was great. It's been a crap year. Let's fix it. Santa needs Mariah. Great. Um, but 
what 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 is the the premise this year because i mean i like the fact that last year it was almost it had elements of, of like um almost like a variety show because she's got you know different people popping up and she's got misty copeland doing some work and she's she spoke uh, very nicely about mariah recently didn't she she has some nice comments to say yes so I like, yeah I, I like there's like different elements to it, but I'm like, but it needs to be, there needs to be, yeah, like a, a little, a little plot, a few little skits here and there or something. And I, I, I just don't know. I, I've got no idea, but we didn't know what the first one was going to be. We didn't really no, know. That's the thing. I, I was going to say, have you seen uh, Casey Musgrave's Christmas special that she did for Amazon Prime? Mm-mm, no. That was, I really did like that. And she had, it was a similar sort of thing to what Mariah did last year, but it was basically set in a house, but the house was like a studio house. Um, so she went from room to room, and in every room there was a different guest. So she'd either have like a musical moment, or she'd do like a, like she had a grandma on the so show, and she had like comedians and stuff like that. And then she did performances in different rooms of the house, and every house was decorated differently. As soon as I saw the video for "Fall in Love Again at Christmas," I wonder whether or not we're going to get like a similar sort of thing to that, where Mariah sort of works her way through the house, and all these different guests are there for Christmas. And she's going to have like a moment with each guest or and then it'll kind of uh, culminate into like a big performance of All I Want for Christmas is You with everybody at the end or something like that. I wonder whether or not it's going to it's going to be kind of, yeah, kind of I I would like it to to be like a homely kind of thing, like the video that she's just released where it's like round the round the kind of like, you know, lit fire around the piano, that kind of thing. And everybody's drinking, and having a great time. I'd like it to be quite homely feeling as opposed to the last one where it was like, it was like a... She's flying across the sky. Yeah, she... <laughs> I don't want to dumb it down, but it's like, you know, like a like a children's set. It was, it felt like a... Toyland. I, I can, yeah, I can see what she was kind of trying to do with it, but it didn't feel very like, um, I don't know. It, it, I don't was know how to it. it was authentic. It was. I know. Yeah. I, I I get what you're saying, and I hadn't thought about that again. Like like I I I get this from you all the time. Like Insta DMs. I love where your brain goes with some of these things. I I love this uh, idea because what I love from this video is how warm and cozy and like intimate it is, and like. A Christmas special can have any kind of premise or basic plot. Like she could just be getting ready to host her friends and family for Christmas, but then something goes wrong with the catering or something turns up late or the ice sculpture is wrong. And then I don't know, like the kids run amok. And then as each guests arrive, you know, they help her fix part of the eat and all the guests arrive. And at the end it's a big, big, because we have to have all I want and yeah. it has to be reinterpreted yet again <laughs> so it's like what's that going to be maybe it's going to be like you say like in a, like a big like ensemble type thing because she's done that song in like so many times maybe she can have some fun like throw some lines to different people and they can have some fun with it and play with it i'm loving your idea of it maybe being like a home-based thing i just think because it's mariah and it's apple and there's budget i think they're thinking what like scale we need we need a big big scale big big production um i don't know i don't know i'm just really really excited <laughs> i am as well yeah I do, I do think i mean judging by this video i do think it's gonna be it looks more premium than last year and, yeah, I, and rich, I don't want to really, like really... i'm not like yes yeah it's like it looks like really really high quality it looks like they've spent some time and some money on it mm. and i know that they spent money last year i'm not saying that the, the special last year wasn't you know, of a, of a high quality, but it just felt, I mean, I don't want to go into details, but like the sleigh ride scene is just, it's, it's a moment, but <laughs> it's, it's, I, I, I took it as, I cringe when I watch it. So, Oh, okay. Well, I, I took it as like deliberately camp. Like she's, she's aware that she's, you know, flying through the sky on a sleigh. <laughs> like it is what it is. And I was like, of course it, it's great. I, think... but I would, lo- I'd love to see her do a concept. Like you say, is a bit, this feels more, more glossy, more slick, just more mature. And that's why I yes. love that image of her just against the pillar in the gold outfit. And I'm like, Ooh, I could do, I could do some more of these looks, some more of these, moments that and the only bits that I, I cringe at in the video and I just feel like they do her dirty sometimes with like the slow-mo or because she'll like sing like you know one and a half time speed or double speed so the snow is falling very slowly but then it, you know she's like almost over pronouncing a vowel or the when you listen to it the the vowel is sound is closing 
but her mouth is still wide open or they they use like what i would say is like no you've used like the wrong take and i feel like oh they've done her a bit dirty with some of the editing because it makes her look off and a bit like out um but yeah the slow motion bits i think in any video it's not just mariah i always i'm so like i just wish the editing would be like tighter 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 and you know i i do think that there are, there are, I don't know whether you, you haven't seen Luis Miguel yet, have you? No, I haven't watched to... I don't no, know, because I've, say... I've seen enough clips and people are saying, like, it, mm, I don't know if I'm going to invest my time. I don't know. It's an interesting one, I've got to say. I watched it from the very beginning, so I watched the first film oh, wow. like three years ago. So, yeah, it's, but what I was going to say in comparison, well, talking about that, is the lipping, the, the guy that plays Luis, Diego Bonito, I think his name is, uh, he pre records all the stuff. And they, he he then like lips to the track that he's recorded when he when he when they're like performing and recording the songs on that show, um. So, and and it looks terrible, like the lipping is just awful. Whereas I went to go and I go, went to go and see I know it's slightly different, but I went to go and see Respect, the new Aretha Franklin film with Jennifer Hudson in. Oh, is that any good? By the way, I need to see it. It is good. Yeah, it it was a little bit disappointing in places, but I, I it was it was it was very good. I I. I do find Jennifer Hudson a little bit annoying. Um, <gasps> Josh, but... <laughs> wash your mouth. <laughs> but um, as that aside, I did think the whole thing was very good. But what I was going to say was because she was singing live when she was performing the songs, there is no need for this kind of, you know, matching up the lipping with, yeah. the, with the sound or the track or anything like that. And then there is no need for like, you know, double pacing the track so that, you know, she can live really quickly to it to make it look more smooth. I do think that if Mariah, even if she wasn't singing it to keep it, but she was singing the same thing and then they sort of matched it up that way, it would look more realistic as to what she was actually singing. That was actually, you know, her mouth was moving. In other words, I just don't think she's very good at lifting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like I, they want like the beauty shot. I'm like, you either need the beauty yeah. shot or you want it being lipped. And I think they, they get like, both and the beauty stuff is ticked off but then the lip in fails a bit and then for me the lip in failing means that the, the beauty element drops a bit because then you look a bit peculiar because you're, you're like you're listening you're you putting want... in more effort on it yeah, yeah 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 you're like no you're like you're overdoing it like you wouldn't be like in a full bright wide smile on that like not on that that vowel sound like no no um Listen, I, I want to uh, hear from you um, a little bit about your uh, experience in Madison Square Garden. There's loads more I want to talk to you about, and we're going to we're gonna have uh, more of a chat on the after show. But I want to fit in two things. Um, we've got to fit in Spin Pin or Bin, because we just have to. Um, but I want to hear a little bit quickly about um, your experience in Madison Square Garden seeing Mariah in New York. I want to know. Well... Um, I wasn't intending to go. I, I basically, I was, I was holding out. Um, it had been about well, that was two thousand nine. I'm struggling. I'm struggling with dates because it's been after <laughs> after this year and a half of being stuck at home. It's it's kind of thrown everything out. But I'm pretty sure that the last time before that I saw her was on the caution tour in May at the Royal Albert Hall. Um, and I was conscious that I wasn't going to get to see her for six months. So I was kind of holding out for Christmas dates. Um, and and I was kind of holding out for international Christmas dates, so I was hoping that she was going to come. Even if she was going to do a show in London or a couple of shows, then I was going to go to those. Um, but then, she, she, I think she announced Vegas, and then she announced the North American tour. And then I thought, judging by how close together the date or how spread out the dates were, it was like, there's no time for you to go uh, across to Europe this year. Um, so then I was like, well, do I leave it or do I go? Uh, and obviously I chose, I chose to go. So, uh, so yeah, I, I flew out for, I think, I think I went for four days, um, and, and timed it absolutely perfectly, um, in terms of me coming back. Um, but yeah, I mean, the show was absolutely insanely good. It was just, yeah, it was, it was insane. I was, I was, I had such a good seat, um, and she sounded fantastic. Um, and it was just to be in Madison Square Gardens and the place was sold out. And um, yeah, she was just booming out Christmas songs. And then she did um, Always Be My Baby and uh, We Belong Together and Hero. Uh, and then obviously segue back into All I Want for Christmas is You for the Big Finish. But yeah, it was just, it was just insane. I, I remember um, saying to friends early in the year, uh, this is the anniversary year. She's going to, I, she's going to do Madison Square Garden. I can feel it. 
Um, I've done New York uh, three three times. Well, once as like a teenager with my family, so I really count. I've done that. I've done New York twice um, as an adult. Um, but I want to go back. Who's going to come? I had a couple of friends lined up, and I and this was but this was like summer chat, and then work gets busy, life gets busy, and then. And then I was looking back, I was kicking myself. I was like, you were talking about, like you were predicting it happening, talking about going six months before. And I should have just done what you did and just bloody made it happen. Was it your first yeah. time in New York? No, I think I think it was my fourth. Oh my I God. Think. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think it was fourth. Yeah, I think in actual fact, it, no, that's not right. Yeah, yeah, it was the fourth. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you love New York. <laughs> I do, yeah. Yeah, I do enjoy it. Was, it. I do enjoy and and to go, it was, it was the first time going for Christmas. So yeah, that was that was an experience oh, that's in special. itself. Um, and then obviously with the concert, that was that was absolutely insane. And then the next day, I'm pretty sure it's the next day. All I want for Christmas is you went number one. And then it was a couple of days before the concert, the day that I was flying out. I think she announced the the signing, the meet and greet um, at the mm. Live Nation store. And it just so happened. What what basically what. I think it was the day after the concert. It was the day after that. Um, most of the lambs that were at um, MSG had flown home, either on the day. I think it was the day of the signing. So a lot of people have actually missed it. Um, and I was kind of debating whether or not to get up at two a.m. in the morning and go and queue <laughs> outside in New York in December um, yeah. and and absolutely freeze to death um, for hours and hours and hours. Um, and I kind of didn't set an alarm and thought well if I wake up uh, I do if I don't I don't and it turned out that I, I didn't get to sleep at all um, and <laughs> set off in a taxi extremely early on on that morning yeah and, and was outside for about I don't know six or seven hours um, oh and with, with the other lambs there but the majority of them were were all local lambs so they were all New York lambs and um, because like I say most of the other people that were that were at the concert had already flown home so it just so happened that I'd kind of timed my yeah my hotel stay, yeah, and my return flight kind of perfectly. Oh, you're um, so and, jammy. Yeah. So yeah, and it was it was that was just an insane experience. Yeah, just getting to meet her and yeah, I got a record signed. So. Oh my gosh! Right, Do you know what? Okay, guys, um, those of you who are mem uh, members of my YouTube channel, that you're going to get this story. Um, I want to hear more about about that. We're, we're going to push that to to the after show. And I'm thinking back to a little something something you told me in uh, in DMs about a little experience. So um, I don't know whether you want to share that story or not. With we'll, we'll may maybe go there on the after show. Uh, so there's more more from Josh coming up on the after show. But Josh, I, I need to play spin pin or bin with you. We need to do this. Okay, so it's finally your turn to play here on the show. So a reminder of the rules and for everyone listening or watching on YouTube. So I'm going to choose three songs at random. You have to allocate one to spin, one to pin, and one to bin. Spin is love it, keep it, play it now. Bin is no trash, you never get to play it again. And then the middle option is pin. I'll put a pin in it, maybe another day I'll play it, I don't know. Um... We're going to Christmas music now. There's only a few weeks left of the year, so this is the first festive edition. Are you ready to play, Josh? I am, yep. Okay, right, here we go. Okay, so the options are, here comes Santa Claus, right down Santa Claus Lane, housetop celebration. <laughs> oh Santa, the original version. And... Christmas time is in the air again, the magical Christmas mix. Because this is what's happening now, is we've got some songs that are being, like, reinterpreted and repeated. So this, I think the Christmas editions of Spin, Pin or Bin are going to be um, tricky. So here comes Santa Claus, right down Santa Claus Lane, housetop celebration. Oh Santa, the solo version. And Christmas time is in the air again, magical Christmas mix. What do you think you might want to do, Spin, Pin or Bin? I think I would spin Oh Santa. Okay. I would pin Christmas Time is in the Air again. And I would bin Santa Claus. I'm going to agree with you on, on, on the bin. I've never been... Yeah, that housetop celebration. I think it, it fits and it does what it needs to do on, on the second yeah. album. Like, cool, great, that's fine. Oh Santa is great and it's iconic, but it is not all I want. and. 
I just love Christmas. Uh, Christmas time is in the air again so much. I don't. I don't, I don't mind if it's the magical Christmas uh, Christmas mix from last year or if it is the uh, original version from the second Christmas album. But that's going to win for me. So spin, pin, or bin. Um, okay, fairly simple one to get us going. Uh, but guys, let us know in the comments what you would do with those three songs. Josh, we are out of time on the main show, but thank you so much for finally joining me. Remind everyone where they can find you online. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Josh Barnes, B A R N E S 99. Fantastic. So Josh and I are going to carry on chatting over on the After Show Extra Chop, which you guys who are members of my YouTube channel can catch. And we're going to talk a little bit more about what happens in New York. There's a couple of stories there we're going to dive into. <laughs>